Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sacred Heart of Jesus Catholic Church. Good to see all of you here with us today, especially anyone uh, and everyone who might be visiting us on this day. Glad to have you with us. Uh, we have some beautiful flowers in the sanctuary. Some were from last weekend, and they still look very nice. These in front of the uh, altar were donated by Bob and Renee Steinprice, celebrating their 44th wedding anniversary. Where are they? they they're normally they're, there. They are back there. Congratulations to them. And in front of the Embo, those are don donated by Bob and Dot Montgomery, celebrating their 56th wedding anniversary. They'll be at the 10 o'clock Mass tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to give up my normal time before Mass to Ann Dirks and Linda Broom. They're going to talk to you about an opportunity we've been having here for a while. Some take advantage of it regularly. Some have never tried it. So we want to give you the uh, little bit of a uh, spiel of uh, Ann's experience doing it as one of the participants. And Linda's in charge of it. It's our exercise groups on uh, Tuesday and Thursday mornings. So if you ladies would come up. Good evening. Good evening. I have two questions for you. Now I want you to be honest because you are in church. How many of you have started an exercise program in your lifetime? Oh, yes. So how many of you five weeks later quit? That's me. I have started so many exercise programs and I never finish because I'm bored. I just don't think it's fun. So I don't stay. But I started Linda's program in January and I'm still there. So why am I still doing this? Well, it's a reason to get out of the house. We've all been in the house for too long and we can go to a very safe environment and there's nice people there and it's really kind of fun. So I definitely feel better. I have longer endurance. My balance is better. My flexibility is good. And I have more strength in my arms and my legs. So it's done a good job. And in, a, I mean, in class, we move all the parts. We do our fingers. We exercise our eyes and our heads. It's really great. So we meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 or at 11.30 or at one o'clock. Now at one o'clock, that's the advanced class. And most of us, and they get on the floor. Most of us in here, once we're on the floor, we have to stay there. We can't get up. So you might not be interested in the one o'clock class, but the class is for men and for women, not just us ladies, you gentlemen. There are a bunch of men there, so you come too. You have excuses why you can't come. Well, I have arthritis. Well, so do I. Well, I have back problems. Well, so do I. Well, my heart doesn't work too well. Mine doesn't work at all. So you can't use that excuse. So you, you, have, to, uh, you have to come to class, and in class, you're in charge. You can sit in a chair, or you can stand. You can do it however you want to. And there's no judgment and no demand on what you're doing. You know, you use all these excuses not to come. Your excuses are the reason to come. But you say, oh, it's so boring. No, it's not boring. We have a great time. We, we move to the music of the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. And while you're doing that, you're thinking about all the wonderful memories of your life back then. We get to sing. We get to dance. You remember how to do the twist? We do it. You remember how to do all sorts of the Macarena? And you can sing, I'm proud to be an American. Yes, you can do all of those things in exercise class. You're going to feel better. You're going to have fun. And it's free. It is a great gift from Linda and Father. And we thank them for doing that. But I think you all need to try it. Come, join us and have a good time, and you'll feel better. Thank you. Just a couple. Okay. 
Okay, so everything Ann said was spot on, okay? And let me just say this. The first thing that I don't want you to feel is intimidated. A lot of people, when they come to class, they see something that someone else is doing, their neighbor, whomever it might be, and they're going, oh my gosh, I cannot do that. You don't have to do that. If I, if I ask you to, to raise your leg this high, you don't have to do that. You can just stand in one place. So I know I'm on my time limit, Father. But anyway, if you have any questions, um, you can reach me through uh, the church, the front desk at the church. Or if you're also interested, I'll be happy to give my email out. You can email me or I have a phone. I have a cell phone. So you have no excuse to, to not get in touch with me. Thank you, Father. Well, it is free. We don't charge. We do put a little uh, bucket out there in the back uh, to give little contributions to help Linda. She's doing this three hours on Tuesday and three hours on Thursday most uh, every week. Now, this Tuesday, they're not meeting because of Election Day and the Knights Memorial Mass dinner set up and whatever. So not Tuesday, but this week, but Thursday. Normally, Tuesday and Thursday, and she puts a great deal of effort into it, energy, uh, come give it a try. There's uh, some open spaces. If they fill up, then we'll have to uh, do something else. No, we'll figure something out. But we started with fairly uh, full classes, and they have dropped off for various reasons, and we'd like them to fill back up again. And I want to say about the 1 o'clock class, it is a little more vigorous, but uh, one of our parishioners, you may know Clyde Porterfield, Clyde is uh, in the hospital right now, or he was. He was having fluid drain. He's got congestive heart failure, so he had a fluid buildup. And he told me he comes to one o'clock class. I said, wow, that's kind of a vigorous class. But he said, I just do what I can do, and that's it. And so he's comfortable being in that group. Uh, and so you might be comfortable in that group too. Do what you can do. Uh, not everybody at that group, I've been at that one o'clock one time, not everybody gets down on a mat. She says, those who have a mat, get on down. Those who don't, sit in the chair and we'll do this or do that. Give it some thought. It does make a difference. And Linda's been working with me on my flexibility. And believe me, when she says do this and I see her doing it and I can't do it nearly as uh, uh, like she does, I don't worry about it. She just says do the best you can. All right, give it some thought. Let's stand and begin our celebration of the Eucharist today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come together to join the church celebrating this solemnity of all saints, let's pause for a moment now and recognize that like the saints, we falter and fail along the way, and yet like the saints, we trust that God is merciful that God is ready to forgive us of our sins. Lord Jesus, you call us to live as your holy ones. At times we fail. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us the strength and the grace we need to grow in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us in a special way in word and sacrament to strengthen us in our way of following your Son, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. And now let's praise our God by reciting the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration 
the merits of all the saints. Bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. 
we do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope, based on him, makes himself pure, as he is pure. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. If I ask you to give a definition of saint or saints, I wonder what you would come up with. Especially if I said, you know, what's another uh, way to speak of saints in two words? Fairly easy. Holy ones. Even though that could refer to not only those in heaven, but those on earth. St. Paul uh, on uh, Friday in the letter to the Philippians spoke of the holy ones in Philippi. Well, I came up with this definition of saints. They are those who go above, or let's start with those who have gone before, let me say it again, those who have gone above and beyond. How about that? They've gone above and beyond, literally, because we believe they're in heaven, and figuratively, in terms of their life and the way they chose to live their life. There are three different prefaces for all saints that the church gives to us, and I dare say it's something that can be quoted without any Uh, question or any hesitation to say, is this what the church teaches? Sadly, uh, recently with Pope Francis in a a documentary that came out in which it quotes something that he said in 2019, in which he wasn't speaking in regards to uh, his teaching role as the Pope, 
but rather answering somebody's question. And he answered it as he answers many questions as do with people with mercy. Always a great direction to go. We listen to today's gospel. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Anyone, Pope or any other person, whose first inclination toward people is mercy, are following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. But what I'm quoting here comes from the preface of Mass, so there's no question this is the teaching of the Church in regards to saints. It speaks of, by their way of life, you give us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory. Three things. By their way of life, you give us an example. They are an example to us of how to live, who in very uh, practical ways followed the Beatitudes and the teachings of Jesus. By communion with them, you give us companionship. That's good news, especially in these COVID days where people are often feeling isolated and alone. We speak of the communion of saints and we'll do the Apostles' Creed like we've been doing and the Apostles' Creed speaks of the communion of saints. We have a companionship with them. We can feel and know their presence with us. By their intercession, sure support. That's what I especially focus on right now because uh, we just witnessed, some of us did, the beatification of Father Michael J. McGivney this morning in Connecticut in Hartford, Connecticut, in the cathedral. And as we did the um, novena leading up to his canon, or excuse me, his beatification, it said in there something to the effect that um, often, or at least at times, miracles have happened even in the midst of a beatification mass or ceremony. Through the intercession of, in this case, Father Michael J. McGivney. That's one of the realities of him being beatified, is we can ask for his intercession. And in fact, it was because someone asked for his intercession that he was beatified. A family who had, must have had seven, at least six or seven children because they were there at the beatification ceremony today and they had their youngest, a little five-year-old Down syndrome child smiled and presented the uh, Cardinal Tobin, a beautiful uh, uh, crucifix that must have had some relic of Father McGivney. When he was in the womb of his mother, he was seen to have found to have something that was fatal, that should have taken his life even before he came into the world. And through the intercession of Father McGivney, that little boy came into the world. A miracle happened. And he was living proof of the powerful intercession of the saints and of those beatified like Father McGivney. That's something very important for us to do, whether it be St. Anthony to find objects, Padre Pio, who through his intercession, miracles have happened during his life and certainly after his life. The intercession of the saints is something that perhaps we've gotten lax about doing, if we ever did. Realize we're missing out on opportunity. Those who have gone to heaven care about us, care for us in our needs, and are always ready to intercede for us. And that brings me to the reality of the present. The reality that saints are those who go above and beyond. Not just those who have done it and are now in heaven, but those who are here on earth, the holy ones. And when I think of those who are going above and beyond right now, I think of three groups of people. Medical personnel, 
teachers, and policemen. There are people who are going above and beyond. And I dare say many of them are faith-filled people or they wouldn't have chosen the professions that they did. And they are putting themselves in harm's way day after day for our children, for our safety, and for our sick, including those who have COVID. They are going above and beyond out of love and of carrying out their profession with great zeal. Blessed are the peacemakers. I think of our policemen and women and what they stand for and what they seek to do. Bring peace where there is contentiousness and even violence. And they should be applauded for what they are doing. Teachers. I just read another teacher in Arkansas has died of COVID. We already think of teachers in some places for sure having to deal with um, rather difficult situations anyway, and even violence, the threat of violence. And here they are, even in COVID times, going to teach our children and providing for them in other ways besides academically. And of course, our medical personnel, how blessed we are that there are people going to the hospitals when the number of COVID patients there continues to go up in some places. They don't stay home. I go up to the hospital sometimes to see our parishioners and I usually go in the evening sometime around 6.37 and some are finishing a 12-hour shift, some are coming on a 12-hour shift. The nurses, the real medical people who are in the trenches day by day caring for those in need. I say we need to pray for them. We need to intercede to God's throne for them, for their safety and for their good um, spirits to stay as high as they can in difficult times and that they continue to carry out what God has given for them to do and to be. The intercession is not just asking the saints to intercede, it's also, also our choice to intercede for people, people we know, people we love, and people we don't know. And yet we should love because of what they're doing in very heroic ways. I think of the end or the reality that uh, we're gaining an hour tonight because of daylight savings. That means another hour. Maybe you're going to do it, use it to catch up on sleep. I don't know. But perhaps that won't be the reality. What I would encourage as we celebrate all saints is for you to use that hour in a Christ-like way at least 30 minutes of it in prayer, interceding for people like teachers, policemen, medical people, and others during these difficult times. In these next few days, praying for uh, those who are running for office and those who will be elected to public office. And then to think about those that uh, not only you're going to intercede for, but think about those that you need to ask for their intercession, those living and those deceased, and realize that in doing so, you are carrying on a wonderful tradition and might even be carrying on a miracle because the saints are ready to intercede for us and God creates the miracle through his power. But their love for us shows itself in some wonderful and miraculous ways. And maybe the other 30 minutes spend on formed.org. We have reinstituted our subscription to this online service of the Augustine Institute, formed.org. All you have to do is go on formed.org and if you want to put slash sign up, very simple. Put in your zip code, our zip code, put in your email address, and you will have so many wonderful opportunities on there 
to grow spiritually as the saints did and to grow an understanding of your faith. I looked at it before Mass today. For All Saints Day, there are at least 16 little vignettes of saints. 30 minutes each one. Pick one. It could be Father McGivney. They have a wonderful thing about Father McGivney on there. Padre Pio, saints of the past. Spend 30 minutes of that hour appreciating the communion of saints, the intercessory power of the saints, and realize that those who have gone above and beyond care for us and want to help us on our pilgrim way to the heavenly Jerusalem where we will be a part of the communion of saints for all eternity. And let us stand now, please. And we are going to continue to pray the Apostles' Creed as it speaks of the communion of saints. So join with me now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praying for the inspiration we need to grow in our appreciation of the saints, of who they were and who they are to us, the example they give us of holiness and the readiness to intercede for us and for those in need, we now bring to the Lord these prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to lead and guide her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the Lord sow the seeds of compassion in their work of guarding the well-being of the most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For expectant mothers, may God bless them with the love of family and community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us gathered here, may God help us in our efforts to seek to follow his will in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they know the joy of heaven in the presence of all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now for our special petitions that we have in our hearts in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those celebrating birthdays this day, especially those of our parish, Dave Nichols Jr., Tom North, and Mark Swain, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That through the intercession and the example of blessed Father Michael J. McGivney, more will respond to the call to uh, be in the order of the Knights of Columbus and to give of themselves more and more to charity, unity, and fraternity, the love that God calls us all to give, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those recently deceased, especially Elizabeth Stant of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And also for Colleen Twardarski, who died a while back, but her memorial mass will be on Tuesday at uh, 9 o'clock here in our church. For Tom and all those who mourn and grieve her passing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, good and loving Father, we rejoice in your saints who surround your throne, giving you praise and glory, but also caring about us and for us. May we recognize uh, and follow their example of holiness each and every day. Grow in that holiness through your grace 
and know that they are ever there for us and for others in our times of need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring today, especially in honor of all the saints, be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers for us sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Father, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Betty Allen and Colleen Twadarski. Welcome them and all who have died into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Blessed 
Michael McGivney and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And now let's turn and wave the peace of Christ to those around us. Peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold Lamb the God, Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Of the world. Blessed Lamb are those God, called to the supper the of the Lamb. Of the Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy Lord to share this heavenly food you satisfy the Let us now stand in prayer. As we adore you, O God, you alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints. We implore your grace so that coming to per perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass one day from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to tell you, I've been very pleased with the number of uh, sheets that have been turned in so far uh, of funeral planning, people giving at least some of the choices that they want in regards to their uh, services when they pass on. This would be a great time during the month of all souls when we consider our dear souls who've gone before us to know that uh, in the communion of saints that we're going to hopefully one day join them. So uh, please don't... Uh, don't hesitate to use that sheet, and you can pull it up on the website, get another copy, or we'll provide more in the narthex for you. Uh, if you need, uh, we would only put one in the bulletin, so if there's a couple at home, then we want you to have one as well. Give us some thought, turn it in, and if we need to, I'll look them over, and if I have any questions, I'll give you a call about them. Also, uh, the Knights of Columbus is having our annual memorial mass this Tuesday at uh, 4 o'clock. So even if you're not coming to the dinner afterward, we're honoring uh, the widows of deceased knights at the Mass as well as the dinner, and we're lifting up our brother knights who've gone before us, one of whom, Ed Cudworth, died uh, early on in the pandemic, and we really never have had a uh, funeral Mass for him. So uh, we're going to lift him and the others who have died this last year up. Come and join us at least for the Mass Please, my brother knights and their wives certainly are welcome to join us as well. And anyone, of course, Mass is for anybody. We are having the 9 o'clock Mass on Tuesday uh, for uh, to Colleen Twardarski and then the Knights Mass that evening at 4 o'clock. And All Souls Day is coming up Monday. We're going to have Mass here in the church at 9. 
We're going to have mass at the columbarium at 10. We're going to do an outdoor mass there. And uh, those who want can stay in their cars. Those who would like to get out, if the weather allows, uh, to uh, sit during the mass and stand uh, during the mass, we'll be out there. And then uh, I'm going to hustle over to Cedarvale and have mass at 11 o'clock over there on Monday. So if you have loved ones at Cedarvale, you might join us for that mass. Uh, you'll need to bring a chair. We won't uh, broadcast it in the cars at the cemetery. So we normally have a very small crowd out there. Bring a chair uh, if you want to join us for the mass out there. And I want to recommend, we don't know when we're going to be able to start doing music like we normally do. And we're not sure about when we're going to get new missalettes because right now we can't do the music. And for those who like music, I love music as well. Because we are not 12 foot apart in the pews, because uh, these masks only uh, you know, prevent so much from going out, uh, and plus it's not easy to sing with a mask on, uh, for those and other reasons that the bishop has said to try to keep mass where we can go home sooner than before, we're not singing at mass. But I want to recommend this Sunday Missal. It's from St. Joseph Sunday Missal. It comes and it has the readings for all the Sundays of the church year. So it starts the first Sunday of Advent. Very easy to carry. You can keep it in your car, bring it in. Uh, it doesn't have nearly as much, obviously, as a Give Us This Day or Word Among Us, but it's very handy. And for those who want and like to follow along the readings on Saturday night or Sunday, this would be a perfect thing for the whole year. It goes from the first Sunday of Advent to the Feast of Christ the King, which is coming up. So if you're interested, they're $2 a piece. We're not going to collect money right away. I'd just like to know how many are interested to see how many to order uh, for the new church year, which starts uh, the uh, last weekend of November. So uh, we have time to get them in. If you're interested in one, either today or sometime in the future, sign up on the table where the Word Among Us and Give Us This Day books are. Let us know that you are interested. And I uh, want to say, when you come to the exercise class, Whatever you want to wear is fine, all right? You don't have to wear your Sunday best, obviously. You don't have to have a, a very nice workout thing. Wear what's comfortable for you. And realize we keep everybody safe. 12 feet apart, you sign in before you come at the door leading into the parish hall uh, from outside, and we take your temperature. We make sure everybody is safe when you're in there. Uh, and I know it will be a blessing for you if you give it a try. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all this evening, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Don't forget to turn your clocks back an hour. These folks can go out. Do we have some help with the ushers starting from the back here? And let's usher out a pew at a time so we can keep our safe distance all the way out. Okay? Keep that six-foot distance or keep on moving. That's the main thing. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, you 